Good evening. Welcome to TCM. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Every Thursday during September, we're paying tribute to United Artists, celebrating its 100th anniversary this year with a mini marathon of movies from the studio's signature franchise, James Bond. Tonight's lineup features the prime of Roger Moore's run as 007, beginning with the movie widely considered one of the best Bond pictures ever made. From director Lewis Gilbert in 1977, The Spy Who Loved Me. Spy Who Loved Me marked Moore's third outing as Bond after taking over the role from Sean Connery following Connery's second stint as Bond. Moore's first Bond picture, Live and Let Die, featured a screenplay by my cousin, Joe Mankiewicz's son, Tom Mankiewicz, and it was specifically tailored to Roger Moore's strengths. Bond was funnier, punnier, with more wink than the Connery movies. With The Spy Who Loved Me, which Tom did some significant uncredited rewrite work for, Moore made the character fully his own. Bond's mission this time is to partner with a Russian agent, played by Barbara Bach, to uncover who's responsible for stealing U.S. and Soviet submarines. The trail leads to yet another Bond supervillain, this time played by Kurt Jurgens, bent on world domination. Typically, he seems more interested in discussing his plans with Bond than killing Bond and getting on with those plans. That has long been a serious supervillain weakness. Anyway, Jurgens has one of the most memorable henchmen in the Bond franchise, a seven-foot, two-inch titan with steel teeth known as Jaws, played by Richard Keel. United Artists nearly doubled the budget of the previous Bond picture, The Man with the Golden Gun, for The Spy Who Loved Me. Much of the money went toward the expensive set pieces, including a super tanker and the requisite Bond car, this time a Toyota Tercel hatchback that got 37 miles per gallon in the city. No, he drives a Lotus Esprit that transforms into a mini submarine. Nearly everything about the movie worked, making it a hit with audiences and with critics. The success was topped off by three Oscar nominations, Best Art Direction for Ken Adam and his team, and a nod for Marvin Hamlish's slightly disco-influenced score. Hamlish also shared a Best Song nomination with Carol Bayer Sager for Nobody Does It Better, sung by Carly Simon, one of the Bond themes most closely identified with the franchise. Here it is from 1977, Roger Moore in his signature performance as James Bond, the Spy Who Loved Me. The Spy Who Loved Me was the first Bond picture produced after the franchise's original production team, Harry Saltzman and Albert Cubby Broccoli, parted ways. Saltzman sold his interest in their production company to their distributors, United Artists, in 1975 after years of squabbles with Broccoli, both major and minor. Broccoli continued as the sole producer of the James Bond movies, as granted by Ian Fleming's estate. Fleming created the character in his novels. There were two other Bond pictures made outside the United Artists franchise. The first was Casino Royale from Columbia in 1967. That was based on Fleming's first Bond novel. He sold the rights to Casino Royale prior to making his deal with Saltzman and Broccoli. The second was Never Say Never Again, a Warner Brothers remake of Thunderball starring the original Bond, Sean Connery, released in 1983 the same year as Octopussy with Roger Moore. Up next, we continue our night of Roger Moore as Bond by going to space to save the world. 